Okay, everyone. So the other day we made a slide tessellation. And remember, a tessellation means that it's a shape with a repeated pattern that are completely touching so that you're not having any gaps between them. So yesterday was a slide, which just meant it, we just slid our piece across, whereas today we're going to do what's called a rotation tessellation. So you're going to take your index card, and just like we did yesterday, you're going to fold it into a sharp right angle here. You're going to cut it so that it becomes a perfect square. Okay. So if your um, index card is not already striped or has so that you can tell the difference between one side or the other, take a crayon or pencil and quickly just shade in one side so we can tell what side has something on it and what side is blank. Okay. So just like yesterday, we are going to take a nibble from corner to corner. And it can be curved, it can be zigzagged. I'm gonna make mine kind of like that. Almost looks like a wave or something, right? So if you have it like this, so remember yesterday we slid our little nibble and then we taped it. This time, since it's a rotation tessellation, we are going to actually do what's called a hinge. So let me get my little piece of tape ready. Okay. And so on this one, you're gonna actually take your finger on the corner and you're going to rotate it. You're going to rotate it so that it fits exactly on the side. So not across from the nibble, but it's going to rotate to the side. And you can put just a little piece of tape there. If you want a little bit more, you can. Just make sure that your tape doesn't hang off the edges. Otherwise, that's going to um, mess up your picture. OK, so we have one nibble here. And then on the opposite side, well, you could do either. Yeah, the, well, let's see. You could do either, either straight edge, it doesn't matter. But you're gonna take another nibble. The important part is to go from corner to corner. Okay, so this nibble. You go corner to corner. Make sure it's facing the exact way that you cut it. Then you're gonna hinge, you're gonna take your finger, hold it, and you're just gonna turn, 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 so that it fits on the straight edge. Yeah. And so do you see I have a little piece of tape sticking out here? You can either fold it under, I'm just gonna kind of snip it off, because it, again, you don't want that extra tape sticking off. And then you're gonna tape the other side. So now I have this interesting just shape, right? So I'm gonna get my paper. I'm going to lay my piece anywhere on it. I can turn it, I can do it this way, this way. I think I might do mine like this. Um, and you know what, I actually like to use the striped side or the colored side just so I can see it as I'm tracing it. I'm gonna trace mine in a fine tip Sharpie just so you can see it, but I would probably do it with a pencil if I were you. Okay, so I'm gonna take my shape. You might need somebody to help you hold this. But you're gonna trace around it. And you wanna to try to be as exact as possible. And you can always turn your paper because I can't see what I'm doing with my hand blocking it. So I just turned my paper to make it easier. OK, so once I've done tracing my shape, so remember the other day when we did our slide tessellation, all we did was slide it and it fit. But because we rotated our tessellation, I'm going to keep, again, the stripe side up. But I'm going to have to now rotate it to see 
where it'll fit. I'm gonna just keep rotating, rotating. Nope, that doesn't fit there. Oh, look, the piece fits right here. So again, I'm gonna hold it. I'm going to trace it. And it's going to go off the edge of your paper. And you definitely want it to do that, because that way it looks like the pattern is extending. So do you see how this piece goes off the edge? But I need to still trace the little parts that are showing so that the pattern continues, so it tessellates. Okay, so I'm gonna keep turning, turning. Now notice I'm not flipping it. If I flip it, it will not fit, it won't tessellate. So I need to make sure I keep it correct on the same striped side. So here's Yep, it fits right here. Okay, so now, I'll put that aside, I need to figure out, hmm, what is it? So depending what I see, I, for some reason I keep seeing a Pegasus. So I'm looking at this, to me this kind of looks like a wing here, and it looks like uh, maybe the feet, and then maybe if I draw the eye, this could be almost like a horse's mane. So maybe if I add some hair, Ooh, that's kind of a raggedy haircut. So it could be the mane. And this could be um, the wings. So maybe I want to shade in the wings a little bit or make them feathery. So I could do that. Now, whatever I do to one, I have to do to the rest, because remember, it is a pattern. OK, so then when I color it in, I might color it a cool shade here. So I'm going to look at that horse's uh, kind of his note. Well, I don't know what you call that, part of his face here. And I'm going to find it. OK, so I see another one down here. So I'm going to do the same eye. I'm going to do. Okay, so here's another one. And I'm gonna color each of these a different color so that they can, you can really see it just like in the samples. So I see another, another uh, head here. Okay, so I'm gonna keep on going. And then when you are all done, you are going to take a picture of your finished tessellation and stick it in your DLL, all right?